My name is Scott Caldwell, and I serve as the chair of the Church's Diversity and Inclusion Committee that was formed in January of this year. Part of our committee's work has been to think about how we communicate who we are as a church and how we expand our reach as a welcoming congregation. The committee has been meeting over the last few months to craft a welcoming statement that, if approved by the church council tomorrow night, would appear on our webpage for those who are looking for a church to call home. Here's the current draft. FUMC Bentonville welcomes all. Because we believe the communion table is God's table, we invite everyone into our church family. We welcome and celebrate every race, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, age, physical and mental ability, national origin, economic station, and political ideology. We come together in action and outreach, aspiring to follow Jesus' example of radical hospitality, love, and grace, as a transformative movement in our community. Pastor JJ, committee members, and I will be available in Heinz Hall today at noon to discuss the welcoming statements with you and to answer any questions or concerns you may have before the church council meets tomorrow night. I encourage you to reach out to Pastor JJ if you're unable to come to the meeting today. Thank you for allowing me to serve the church in this capacity. And a big thank you to Pastor JJ, Ken Weatherford, and all our committee members. Kendra Adair, Liz Driver, Casey Weatherford, Bree Madden, Shelley Cathcart, and Veronica Gramati. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church in downtown Bentonville. Uh, wow, it's exciting to be back and to, uh, to see so many of your faces. 
Uh, and we are totally happy with those faces that we can't see still, and that's fine too. Uh, but uh, it is just a joy to be here with you this morning. My name is Ken Weatherford, Director of Worship Arts here at First Methodist, and, uh, and I am pleased to... Uh, I don't ever get to do this, this welcoming part, so I'm going to take advantage for half a second and do one quick little thing and introduce you to everybody up here. Over here we've got Ashley singing, uh, Casey singing with me, uh, Matt back here on the piano, uh, Garrett on bass, uh, we've got, uh, oh, I, you're, you're new, and now I just, Corey on guitar, oh my God, I, I was going to say Colin, and I went, nope, that's not it, I'm a dummy. Uh, we've got Bill on percussion, and uh, Gloria on cello, did I already say you, or, no. Uh, I, I, someone pointed out to me not long ago that uh, we, we haven't introduced anybody that's up here, but these are such an vital uh, and important part of the work we get to do each and every week, and so uh, I love them and thank them because they make me look and sound a lot better than I ever am. And, uh, <laughs> it's Pentecost morning. Um, we have some uh, spirit sticks that I think uh, have been passed around, especially to those uh, young at heart with us. Uh, if you hear that word, spirit, sung or spoken this morning, we encourage you to wave them. Uh, I would say go with the gentle wave. These are, are handmade crafts. I don't know how established that screw is on on the top, so you might not want to just be going nuts with them. But, you know, a gentle movement of the spirit this morning. Uh, and uh, lastly, um, we've got our I Love My Church Day coming up this next week, Sunday afternoon, 4 to 6 o'clock. Any and all are welcome. You can come. You don't have to do anything to come. Just come and show up and, and have fun and fellowship and, and be with one another. If you would like some food at the event, uh, we, we are pre-ordering all of that food. And so go to our website, uh, fumcbentonville.org, uh, to uh, place your order for your family or for yourself. I think meals are $5 for kids ten. and 10 for adults. Is that correct? I got a thumbs up from the back. All right, good deal. Thank you, Brooke. Um, so that's what's going on there. So we'd love to see you there. Um, be sure to go and uh, order your meal, and we'll see you next Sunday. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for this morning, for this chance to come together to worship you on this holy Pentecost Sunday, the Sunday where we lift up, where we remember, where we Sing about your spirit, your presence in our lives. God, may we experience that presence, that source this morning. Move in and through us that we would experience your love and grace and carry that forward into all the world. We ask these things in your son's most precious and holy, holy name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. As you're able, would you stand and join with us this morning?
scorches us. It's a blessing for Pentecost Day. But before we bow our heads, um, I want to read a little um, of the intro that she wrote wrote to this um, on her website. She says, before he left, Jesus told his friends he would send them the advocate, the comforter. Now we see this comforter coming as wind, as flame, reminding us that comfort is not always comfortable, for it makes itself known in community where we find the most searing challenges and the deepest blessings we will ever know. Would you join me in an attitude of prayer for this blessing? Here's the one thing you must understand about this blessing. It is not for you alone. It is stubborn about this. Do not even try to lay hold of it. If you are by yourself thinking you can carry it on your own, to bear this blessing, you must first take yourself to a place where everyone does not look like you or think like you. A place where they do not believe precisely as you believe, where their thoughts and ideas and gestures are not exact echoes of your own. Bring your sorrow, bring your grief, bring your fear, bring your weariness, your pain, your disgust at how broken the world is, how fractured, how fragmented by its fighting, its wars, its hungers, its penchant for power, its ceaseless repetition of the history it refuses to rise above. I will not tell you this blessing will fix all that, but in the place where you have gathered, wait, watch, listen. Lay aside your inability to be surprised, your resistance to what you do not understand. See then whether this blessing turns to flame on your tongue, sets you to speaking what you cannot fathom, or opens your ear to a language beyond your imagining that comes as a knowing in your bones, a clarity in your heart that tells you, this is the reason we were made for this ache that finally opens us, for this struggle, this grace that scorches us toward one another and into the blazing day. Amen. You may be seated. 
Welcome to this day of Pentecost. I want to add my welcome to Ken and everyone up here. We're so excited to have you here in worship and with us online. Something that you haven't practiced in a while is that you actually have an attendance pad in your pew, and we invite you to fill that out. You haven't probably done that in a year or so. So welcome to you. Welcome to those who are joining us online. Please fill out the Connect card for those of you who are at home. We do celebrate the season of Pentecost beginning this day. And for those in the church who may not know, this is when we get to celebrate wearing Razorback Red Sunday. So we're excited that the rest of the church knows about Razorback Red today. We are going to turn to Holy Scripture, the Acts of the Apostles. I'm going to be reading from the second chapter, verses 1 through 21. Listen for the word of God this morning. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mitts. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, our creator, by the power of your Holy Spirit, fill our hearts this morning. Wake us up to the good news and still in us a heart to be your witness and to engage in your mission. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. On Easter Sunday, Adelaide Lake, who's sitting in the back with her parents this morning, who just turned two, said, Jesus loves me. Jesus came back. Preach it, Adelaide. And if that doesn't sum up the Christian faith, I don't know what does. And we've been celebrating these two tenets of our faith tradition during the Easter season. We've celebrated that we are deeply loved by God as exemplified in the life and death of Jesus Christ and the fact that Jesus came back, raised from the dead. And he appeared as the risen Christ to doubting Thomas, to that breakfast on the beach with Peter and on the road to Emmaus with the disciples. And now 50 days since that day of resurrection, the disciples are waiting for Jesus to come back again. At the end of Luke's gospel, Jesus tells the disciples, you are witnesses. I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city 
until you have been clothed with power from on high. And now it's 50 days, and it's a holiday in Jerusalem, the harvest of weeks. And just like when they gathered in Jerusalem during Passover, the disciples are joined by travelers from all over the world to take part in this religious festival. Many different nationalities were represented around the marketplace. Different languages could be heard in the public square. And suddenly, like the rush of a mighty wind, flames appear upon the disciples, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And tongues of fire became tongues, enabling them to speak. And the disciples witnessed to their faith in all of these languages, and everyone could hear the gospel message in their own tongue. But the folks who were gathered from every nation didn't understand what was happening. They were hearing about God's deeds through Jesus Christ in their own language, but they puzzled in disbelief. Those Jews gathered from all over, said, Disciples, you're drunk. Go on home. The Apostle Peter takes a moment to interpret the activity of the Holy Spirit to them. He says, y'all, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. They aren't drunk. This is a fulfilling of the prophecy from Joel. God will pour out the Spirit on, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will have visions and your old men will dream dreams and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus came back through the gift of of the Holy Spirit, just as he promised. The power of God came upon them, gave them the ability to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Now in Hebrew and in Greek, spirit is the same word for breath. Remember in Genesis, when our creator God took the clay from the earth and breathed into it to give us life. We come from dust. We are fragile beings, but we have been breathed into by the Creator. As Rob Bell says, remember that you are divine breath. When we enter this world as a newborn, we cry out because we take that first breath. And that breath is with us until it slows down and we take our last at the moment of our deaths. But that divine breath is with us throughout our lives. The Creator is at work in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is how God breathes life into us, how God guides us on the journey, how God leaves us gifts to do the work of the kingdom. Now many of us have been fortunate to be able to see firsthand the art by that world-renowned glass-blowing artist, Dale Chihuly, because his work was featured here in Bentonville at Crystal Bridges. In my experience when I was there, it was like walking through Alice in Wonderland to see what he has done with the elements of fire and air and how he has remarkably pushed the boundaries to distinction in this art form. In his own words, glass blowing technology hasn't really changed. We use the same tools people used 2,000 years ago. The difference is that when I started, Everyone wanted to control the glass blowing process, but I just went with it. The natural elements of fire and movement and gravity and force were always there and are always with us. The difference was that I worked in this abstract way and I could let the forces of nature have a bigger role in the ultimate shape. The divine breath, the very force of God, the Holy Spirit has always been with us. God has been breathing life into us at our beginning and during the course of our lives. And just like glass in a glass blower's hand, we have a mind of our own. We have the freedom to do as we choose. We can choose to cooperate or work against how God is trying to shape our lives. Our actions contribute to God's ability to form us and use us in the world. How are our choices making it difficult for the Creator to shape us? Are we allowing ourselves to cooperate with what the Spirit has in mind for our lives? The prophet Jeremiah in his book shares his call to ministry and remembers that God said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before Jeremiah was even a glimmer, he had already been shaped by God. 
He had been formed with gifts and limitations, with personality and with purpose. Ask any parent here and they'll tell you what kind of children's their ch what kind of kids their children would become even as babies. I remember taking my son Jack home from the hospital just two days old and he, he raised his hands every time we went over a bump in the road. And I knew that he was going to be an intense person. <laughs> and sure enough, he has not proved me wrong about that kind of intensity. We do not come into this world as raw material to be shaped and formed. God has already formed us in part with certain gifts and passions and personality. And we are meant to be using our gifts to work with God's purposes for this world. So when we claim our gifts, we can make intentional choices that will align us with what God would have us do and be. We can cooperate with the creative spirit at work in the world. But we have to learn to pay attention to holy interruption and recognize it as holy. We can't be like those who, when met by the spirit, stare in disbelief and we look for another explanation. We are to witness when we see the spirit at work. We need to take notice of the gifts that have been instilled in us and the limitations that are before us where are the places we find the greatest joy in the things that we do? Where is our work effortless? Now, where do we find ourselves drained of energy? Where is the work that feels like it takes the most effort for us? You have to pay attention to these things. The day of Pentecost teaches us that people in the church can be a vehicle for God's creative spirit, but we need to be those who wake up and pay attention to the gifts and the visions and the dreams that God gives us. During my senior year of college, I received what I like to call a holy interruption. I was traveling abroad in Spain that year, and I was in Barcelona, and I was at La, Gra La Sagrada Familia, which means the Holy Family. It's a cathedral where the artist Gaudi has spent most of his life building and working. And he created on the backside of this cathedral cathedral, these amazing sculptures that told the story from the early beginnings of humanity, the plants of the earth, and it went through all of biblical history, the Old and the New Testaments, and finally at the top, it was a dove in the form of the Holy Spirit, and I must have looked at these sculptures for an hour in my time at La Sagrada Familia, and after that experience, I knew I was supposed to go to seminary, and we never know when the Holy Spirit is going to show up. It could be in Spain, it could be in line at the grocery store, but we have to be prepared to recognize the Holy Spirit when it shows up. Just as close as our first language, as our native language, I believe the Creator uses the things we love the most to build the kingdom. In the movie Stranger Than Fiction, Maggie Gyllenhaal talks about how she wanted to make the world a better place, so she decided to enroll in law school at Harvard. And she started baking for her study group as they gathered to study. So they would study harder. And soon she was baking more elaborate recipes and more and more people were coming to her study group and they were getting great grades. But by the end of the semester, she was getting a D average. So she dropped out of law school and she thought, if I'm going to make a difference, I'm going to do it by baking cookies. How can someone make the world a better place by making cookies? But if God has planted a particular vision with certain gifts to usher in the kingdom, then the creative spirit is going to use those gifts to make a difference. Amen? In a year that has felt like a pause, some of us may have wondered, when is Jesus going to come back? When am I going to feel normal again? When will church be like those disciples, we've been waiting for life to begin. But Jesus is just as close as your breath. He never left. The Spirit is working to create possibilities for the future even now. He's been waiting for you to wake up to the dreams that have been instilled in your hearts and be shaped by the gifts that were given to you at your birth. The divine breath wants to rush in like a mighty wind and once again inspire you for the work that lies ahead. The signature song for Mama Cass of the 60s band, The Mamas and the Papas, was Dream a Little Dream. She always wanted to be 
a Broadway star, and she was jealous of Barbara Streisand, who got the part she wanted in The Music Man. And John Phillips of The Mamas and the Papas said, Barbara Streisand may have great pipes, but she could never sing Dream a Little Dream in Mama Cass's way. She doesn't have that absolute sweetness and love in her voice that Cass had. Cass may not be able to hold a note as long as Barbara Streisand, but to me it's always been important to capture the meaning of the lyrics and to capture the love in the song, and that's what Cass could do. On this day of Pentecost, the disciples were waiting behind closed doors of impossibility. They just wanted life to go back to the way it had always been. Perhaps they were drained. Maybe they believed they'd taken a wrong path. Maybe they were jealous of what God was doing in the lives of their friends and their families. But the Holy Spirit rushed in with a vision and empowered their gifts and breathed new life into them and invited them to dream a little dream of what God can do in us. And may it be so for us, even 2,000 years later. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward, and we praise God that the Holy Spirit always inspires us to vision for our church as we aim to become the the spiritual heart of downtown Bentonville for those who are far from home and feel far from God. Our welcoming spirit enables us to extend fellowship and grace to our neighbors and your gifts, your generosity, make sure that that work and vision of the Holy Spirit happens in our church and in our community. Let us go to God in prayer. Living God, Lord of us all, only you can send your spirit to bring us new life. You graciously speak your word of hope in times of struggle and uncertainty and in times of joy and peace. We are grateful that you are always at work in our lives and in the world to fulfill your promises. May our gifts today show our trust in you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Shine. 
steps of love.